America will stand with the allies of freedom to support democratic movements in the Middle East and beyond with the ultimate goal of ending tyranny in our world. And so you have kind of the high ground president with the lofty motives being proclaimed. We're told that peace is being sought, alternatives to war are being explored. And that's kind of, you know, the official story. And I am continuing and I am increasing the search for every possible path to peace. Whether we're talking about President Johnson or President Nixon or the president today, you have one chief executive after another in the White House saying how much they love peace and hate war. We maintain our strength in order to deter and defend against aggression, to preserve freedom and peace. No one, friend or foe, should doubt our desire for peace. The United States wants peace. We seek peace. We strive for peace. Every president of the last half century has gone out of his way to say that he wanted peace and wanted to avoid war. I pledged in my campaign for the presidency to end the war in a way that we could win the peace. Even while ordering military action. I show them we are taking that off now. I think the brown people have to run around about 200 people. Well, no, 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 I got to use nuclear bombs. So you have this paradox in a way of the president who has just ordered massive military violence and a lethal action by the Pentagon turning around and saying, I want to oppose violence and promote peace. I respect your idealism. I share your concern for peace. I want peace as much as you do. Actually, war becomes perpetual when it's used as a rationale for peace. We cannot wait for the final proof, the smoking gun, that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. As Americans, we like to think that we're not subjected to propaganda from our own government, certainly that we're not subjected to propaganda that's trying to drag the country into war, as in the case of setting the stage for the invasion of Iraq. Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. There is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Botulin, VX, sarin, nerve agent. Iraq and Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. Iraq and Al-Qaeda. Terrorism. Cyber attacks. Nuclear program. Biological weapons. Cruise missiles, ballistic missiles. Chemical and biological weapons. Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. President Bush has said Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Tony Blair has said Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Donald Rumsfeld has said Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Richard Butler has said they do. The United Nations has said they do. The experts have said they do. Iraq says they don't. You can choose who you want to believe. The war propaganda function in the United States is finely tuned, it's sophisticated, and most of all, it blends into the media terrain. The White House says it can prove that Saddam Hussein does have weapons of mass destruction, claiming it has solid evidence. The White House insisted again today it does have solid evidence that Saddam Hussein is hiding an arsenal of prohibited weapons. It's necessary to provide a drumbeat media echo effect. They might fight dirty using weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, or radioactive. There are ties between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda. Anthrax, smallpox. Dirty bomb. Dirty bomb. Iraq-Al-Qaeda connections. Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda share the same goal. They want to see, both of, them, both of them want to see Americans dead. And I was very struck by the acceptance, the tone of most of the media coverage as the sabers were rattled, as the invasion of Iraq gradually went from possible to probable to almost certain. The president essentially giving Saddam 48 hours to get out of Dodge. War now seems all but inevitable. Short of a bullet to the back of his head or he, he leaves the country, uh, war is inexorable. 
Well, I think that's exactly right. War is inevitable, and it is approaching inexorably. Is war with Iraq inevitable right now? I think it's 95% inevitable. I don't you, at this point, right now, tonight, don't see any other option but war. Do you? I'm asking you, Ambassador. <laughs> I, I agree. I don't think there's a viable option for the administration at this point. We're way too far out front in this. Send us over there, guys. Let's get on with it. Let's get it over with. Showdown Iraq. If America goes to war, turn to MSNBC and the experts. And in many ways, the U.S. news media were equal partners with the officials in Washington and on Capitol Hill in setting the agenda for war. We'll take you there, MS. And although it's called the liberal media, uh, one has a great deal of difficulty finding an example of major media outlets in their reporting challenging the way in which the agenda setting for war is well underway. And when that reporting is so much a hostage of official sources, that's when you have a problem. U.S. officials tell CNN. Bush officials says that analysts say. Pentagon officials tell us. According to U.S. intelligence. Often we're encouraged to believe that officials are the ones who make news. That U.S. officials say. U.S. officials say that. U.S. officials here say. These officials here at the White House tell us. They are the ones who should be consulted to understand the situation. I just pull these two things out. I've laundered them so you can't really tell what I'm talking about because I don't want the Iraqis to know what I'm talking about. But trust me, trust me. <laughs> if history's any guide, the opposite is the case. The officials blow smoke and cloud reality rather than clarify. We will, in fact, be greeted as liberators. The notion that it will take several hundred thousand U.S. troops to provide stability in post-Saddam Iraq are wildly off the mark. So the money's going to come from Iraqi oil revenue, as everyone has said. They think it's going to be something like $2 billion this year. They think it might be something like 15, 12 next year. A country that can really finance its own reconstruction and relatively soon. National Security Advisors Ken Edelman and Richard Pearl, early advocates of the war, said the war would be a cakewalk. The sources that have deceived us so constantly don't deserve our trust. And to the extent that we give them our trust, we set ourselves up to be scammed again and again. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. But, excuse me, but is this an unknown unknown? Uh, I'm not. Several unknowns, and I'm, I'm just wondering I'm not this going, is an unknown I'm not going to say which it is. But, 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 but,